Hello everyone. Well, this vacuum cleaner I'm about to unbox has been in my garage for it must be about two years. So I've no idea if it's going to be okay, but I wasn't bothered about opening this because I bought this basically to use some of the parts to repair another machine. Now I've got a new in the box, Master Lux. I bought from that place that was selling a lot of new old stock on eBay a while ago. I got a lot of vacuums from them. A lot of them ended up arriving broken or faulty. And the Master Lux I bought was also faulty. Everything seemed fine, but the pump wasn't working. So I'm hoping this has got a working pump and I'll be able to take that pump out of this one, put it in my mint new in the box one, and then I've got a nice working machine. And then I've got some other spares, or I'll just sell this as it is without the pump. Somebody might want it for spares for their Electrolux Master Lux. So the Master Lux was uh, an Electrolux three in one with a pump. Sort of similar principle to the pneumatic George, the Hoover Aqua Jet. Oh, it's actually got the original box. I didn't think it had the original box, but it does. Right, well, I won't waste your time opening this. I'll just uh, get rid of all the outer packaging and then we'll have a closer look at what I've bought. Well, this Master Lux comes in a nicer box than the one I previously bought because that's just a plain cardboard box with some line drawings on. This one has got some full colour photos. The complete shampoo and wet slash dry vacuum cleaner. Electrolux, now there's a good idea. So we'll have a look at the side showing the sh carpet shampooing function and the carpet carpet washing and the floor washing. That's what I meant to say. So it can wash floors as well with a little squeegee adapter. This is all the tools. Hopefully I've got all the tools. Now I need the hose actually. I'm hoping the hose and it looks the same. I've got a, um, an Electrolux Aqualux. I also bought new in the box. I didn't notice at the time of unboxing it that there was a split in the hose. Not a big split, but a split. Um, so I couldn't, I wanted to sell that recently and when I found the hose was split, I couldn't. So I'm hope, hopefully this hose is good enough uh, and clean enough to go with my uh, new in the box Aqualux. And then on this side, we've got the dry use showing it cleaning up after some DIY project and then a flower pot. Flower pots seem to get spilled a lot. Uh, <laughs> Lots, lots of wet and dry and multifunction vacuum cleaners. The brochures and the um, boxes often feature a flower pot that's been uh, knocked on the floor, possibly by a cat. Right, let's, uh, don't know what this is going to be like. As I say, I must have had this two years. I took the um, label off, so I don't know. Ah, right. Ah. I didn't, I know I don't know if it's changed colour, it's gone green, has it gone green or was it? No, it's not green on here, it should be grey, it's done a, it's done a Dyson, it's uh, turned green. But because I only want the pump out of this, I'm not too bothered. Yeah, that's, that's unusual, yeah, that shouldn't be that colour. I can't even remember if it looked like that in the picture. It's, as I say, it's a long time, long time ago. This hose though, I can take that end off. That end, end, the hose needs a good clean, but I can, yeah, I should be able to take the ends off. Hopefully it's a screw fit. So I can use the actual hose. So that's a spare I need. We've got two metal ones. Got some airflow bags. I think there's just one bag in there. Oh, and a pack of paper filters. Quite a few paper filters. That's a handy spare to have. Dusting brush, used but quite good condition. Oh, that's good. We've got the instruction book. 
We've also got <laughs> some plastic that's come off. As I said, I'm not too bothered. This is going to be used for spares, providing the pump is working. Um, we've got the squeegee. Might have been used a couple of times. That's, that's the hard floor squeegee. And a mm, bit rusty carpet and floor nozzle. Then we've got that's a uh, that's a grab handle that goes onto the wand. We've got very good condition, hardly used upholstery nozzle. And then we've got some uh, tubing. And we've got the uh, spray trigger assembly. Nice uh, metal fittings there. Which you don't normally get metal fittings. You do on the pneumatic George and Henry Wash. But that's, that seems okay. And I think this is the final piece of the jigsaw. This is the uh, drag wand or fishtail nozzle. Hmm, I'm not sure if it should just have a bare end. We'll have to see. I'll check the instruction book. Well, I think, is that it? Oh no, finally. We have a crevice tool that's been used, but again, it's in pretty good shape. We'll just check the um, instructions to see if I've got everything that I should have. Well, there is a foam filter and a cloth filter shown here. That will be inside the machine, hopefully. But um, yeah, I think it's complete. Let's have a closer look at this uh, rather discolored. It has gone green. It should not be green. It's funny how the buttons have, have turned very green as well. I mean, that, that's the, oh, that's a bit hard to push. You've got the shampoo pump and the power on off. Okay, let's uh, check out the machine itself. And while I'm checking the machine out, it'll be interesting to see where these broken blue parts are from. I've no idea at the moment. So, oh, yeah, it's a good job I only wanted this as a spares machine because we've got some damage. <laughs> That's about to to come off that mm. yeah oh there's something rattling about inside that you know I've said it before I should never leave things before I open them as I said I just want the pump from it that, and it wasn't a lot of money I seem to remember we've got uh, on the top the old Electrolux branding with the uh, royal appointment just about see it by appointment to Her Majesty Queen Elizabeth II, suppliers of suction cleaners and floor polishers, Electrolux Limited Loot and Beds. I think this is made in Italy though, it's not made by Electrolux, I believe this is made by, I think it's made by Vortis, who uh, make extractor fans and things, I don't know if they're in the vacuum cleaner business anymore, but I'm pretty sure this is made in Italy, so it's not actually made by Electrolux. It's quite dirty. Oh, big, big crack here. A little bit of plastic out of this. Oh dear me. Might end up just binning most of this, actually. Uh, how do you open these? Oh, oh well, there we go. <laughs> That's broken off. How does that open? Oh, there we go. It's just a bit stiff. Come on. There we are. Right. Inside we've got oh more. More of that blue broken plastic. I wonder if it's off this. 
here's the uh, recovery tank. You uh, put the bag onto the old uh, bag fill tube there, the grey fill tube. I think the bucket, this is the solution bucket. So the clean solution and water goes here. And you don't use this for dry use, you take that out. That's, that's in one piece. There's some sort of a seal around it. Feels quite hard. I'll pop that back in. Or do you? Ah, actually no, I think you do. Hmm, I think you do leave it in. That's unusual though, because uh, always me instructions. Normally with cleaners like this, you take out the clean water tank, but it looks like, I think you have to have it in. I'm not sure. Oh, hmm. Oh, well, no, it does. It does fit, so it's a little bit shorter. So I think you could use it. Uh, this would be okay without the working pump as a, a garage vacuum, just the standard dry vac. But that doesn't. They don't seem too good. So we've got uh, a paper filter this is the same system as on the aqua lux the wet and dry one and these are an elastic band of all things so that's the paper filter it does have the cloth filter needs cleaning under the cloth filter there should be a float valve so for wet use you take this off oh it's also got but that might mm, oh that's perished look <laughs> Typical of this style of filter, it's just decomposing. Here's the float valve anyway, with the uh, the float that rises up as the cleaner fills with liquid to cut the suction off. And there is another little filter as well that needs a clean. Quite dirty. Ugh. That foam seems okay though. It's a pretty standard sort of foam. You can just get any sort of foam and cut them to fit this type of filter. Uh, I don't know if I can see, I can just about see part of the motor and fan and it looks rust free, so that's good. That little filter there has hopefully helped stop any liquid getting in, causing any damage. Oh, we've got the model number and serial number here. And yes, as I suspected, it is made in Italy. So this is Electrolux model Z76. The product number is 900-9430-01. Serial number is 9360-01139. Nine, I uh, think this is, I don't know if it's an 89 or a 99. I think it could be 1989. I'm not sure. Um, I don't know if it's 9 and the serial number, I don't know if 9 is the year and 36 is the week, possibly. 240 volts, 50 hertz, 1000 watts made in Italy. So I think uh, what I'll do, just switch it on now. Yeah, we've got the, uh, the pipe here with a tiny little mesh filter on the end. So that takes the shampoo solution through the pump and through the tubes to the nozzle for shampooing. But we don't need to try that. We do, well, we do need to try that out. I will try that out in this video just to check the pump works. So as I said, that's all I really bought this for. I'll pop the um, clean water tank. Still don't know where those uh, broken blue bits are from, but uh, no doubt I'll find out at some point. Hang on, there we go, that goes in like that, whoops, it's very bulky this, bulky and heavy, certainly heavier than the Hoover Aquajet, which uh, was made in the UK, the Aquajet in Canberra Slang, Scotland. Right, well since I've had this for so long, I'll uh, not risk it, I'll just put it over there and uh, 
plug it in and switch it on. Sounds okay, it's relatively quiet for a wet and dry. Not sure if the shampoo pump will function without the suction motor on. Nothing's happening. Try again. Mm, I can't hear anything. But it doesn't mean to say it's not working. Obviously you shouldn't really run the pump Ooh, that's not a very tight fit you shouldn't run the pump without water oh right you just <laughs> you have to be careful not to go too far with this one you turn it a certain amount but if you keep turning it comes out again so about there i think okay well i'm just going to put some clean water oh it's very stiff <sighs> Yeah, I think a lot of this is just going to go to the tip, I'm afraid. Once I've, I've, I've harvested the parts, that's not easy to open at all. Come on! I'll end up breaking it and stuff. It's a ridiculous, ridiculous thing. Oh. Let me just turn it off at the socket. Safety first. <laughs> yeah, I don't think I can even sell this to anyone. Because that's that shouldn't be like that. I'll just do that. Let's do that. Okay. Ugh. Right then. I'll just pop some water in the outer part here of this tank and we'll see if the pump works. Right, I've not filled it to the top. Just put enough in, I think, to uh, test it. Uh, pop the motor unit on. Now I think possibly in wet use I should have the foam filter but obviously that's uh, well falling to bits so I'll have to just try it without. Make sure that this part this tube goes into the actual water. I mean I haven't filled it, I've half filled it so it should be enough. Now that that's the way. That's it. Make sure it goes in the tank where the water is. Clip the clips. Come on. One clip goes in and the other one. Oh, it's, uh, it has, has it? Yes. It's gone in. Okay. I'll just have to pause, check the instructions, and set this up for carpet shampooing. Okie dokie. Well, that's set up. I think it's set up correctly. Fairly quick to do. It looks a bit odd with these uh, solution tubes being just blank on the end, but they seem to fit in. And I think to release, you must press down on the collar somehow. But anyway, it's in securely. So we've got, straighten that up. We've got the old grip attached and the trigger assembly. That's a little bit off kilter. There we go, that's better, sort of. <laughs> trigger assembly and the short hose a solution tube attached to the hose plugged into the machine that bit of plastic that I didn't know what it was for I've discovered what it's for well I think I have it does look a bit odd this bit here a piece of plastic should fit around here and I think it presses in to release the solution tube so I'm not sure how I'm going to get that out I can confirm that you are supposed to fit the foam filter to this when using it for wet use, but not the cloth filter, obviously. Right, well, I don't have much hope that the pump's going to work on this. Now I've seen the rest of the machine. You see this handle here, you, you use that as a bit of extra grip. While you're squeezing the trigger to release a solution and you drag the wand on the carpet or floor release the solution then you go over it again 
as many times as you like to remove the excess cleaning solution. Right, let's just see then if this pump's going to work. Let's switch it back on. Whew. Right, we'll look at the end of the fishtail nozzle and just see if we get any water coming out of that when I squeeze the trigger. not folks now let's try and do some uh, fault finding that's getting this off how do you get this off let's just check the old instruction book They're not very good instructions I have to say da, 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 da. oh you can have it you can buy an optional upholstery nozzle as well You'd think they'd provide it, wouldn't you? There we go. Optional. Don't think I'll be able to buy one of those. At least we can still get the get. We can still buy this kind type of machine. Obviously, the Henry Wash and the the uh, Pneumatic George. More or less, this type of machine, very similar principle. Um, so this video is of any interest to people who like vacuum cleaners and not wanting to buy a three-in-one because, as I said, you can't buy this anymore. And I don't think I'd recommend it. I'm not really sure how he's supposed to release the tubes. I don't think it says. Oh, is there a date? Oh, it's got 89. Ah, so this could be from 89 when I read out the uh, the serial number. It says 89 on the leaflet to the instruction book. Right, I can't see how he's supposed to take these off normally. I don't think it does. I don't think it'll do. It won't just pull out because it's uh, it's gri it grips in when you push it in to the connection. It holds onto it. So it's something to do with this collar here. Normally, it's you normally push it in and it pops. Oh, there we go. Right. Okay. Now I've taken it off the trigger assembly. I'll try the pump again and we'll see if it pumps through. The problem could be in here, you see. <laughs> think I bought a dad folks this is what was wrong with my new in the box one it, the pump wasn't working and it looks like I, ca I can't even hear the pump operating it's not it I don't think it, it doesn't operate independently I mean these switches are very stiff motor sounds okay uh, I might I could just sell it as it is I suppose I need the hose from it though so it's not gonna be of much use oh dearie me yeah you see that big blue collar is designed I'm sure to push down on the uh, little orange collar so you can release oh it's done it anyway well, okay, we'll try it without. It's, it's, uh, <coughs> I've got a cloth here. See if it's going to spew anything out. Let me just double check though that it is, I'm sure it is in the water. Again, we've got... Oh. Yep, 
Yeah, it's, it's in the water. You can, it's been in the water where my thumb is there. So it has, it is submerged in liquid. So it's the pump, isn't it, that's not going. I'll try it without, see if it's going to spurt anything out. Nope, folks. Ah, oh, dearie me. Right. Gonna have to delve a bit uh, deeper into this. I think the other one, I don't know if it was the pump that was broken or there was a, a, just a little elbow piece that was broken in the machine. I think this is quite easy to get into because I remember getting into my other one. Right. Let's have a look. Ah, right, yes. It is quite easy. Well, I need to get my tool bag. There are, I think it's just three screws that we need to remove from the motor cover. They are covered by little plastic caps, so lever the caps off to reveal the screws. Okie dokie, I've got a little flat-headed screwdriver. I'm not too bothered if I damage the top of this because I have a feeling this is going to end up at the local tip. Something tells me, I mean it's already broken the top of this. Oh dear, that's still a little bit too big. Have I got a smaller screwdriver? I don't think I've got one smaller than that. Oh. Well I have, but it's not a flat. Oh no, I'll just... Where is it? Oh dear me. I'm not bothered. This... Oh. If this, this uh, wasn't already damaged, I'd be taking great care not to... <laughs> not to damage these caps around the... The screw covers, this, the screws, these are screw covers. Anyway, to save you falling asleep, I'm going to do this off camera and in case I swear, I don't like, I don't allow bad language on my channel. So uh, I'll do the swearing and huffing and puffing with the camera paused. Okie dokie, well, two of the covers came off really easily, but the first one, who didn't want to come off. I hope that's it. Oh, that's nice. It comes off very cleanly. There we go. That's the colour it should be. That's the colour. That's the colour it's turned. So, that is a hefty pump, I have to say, compared to the pump on the Vax machines. Again, this is unplugged. That is one chunky pump, isn't it? And. I don't know, I think it could be this piece here, this, uh, well, it's a Y-shaped piece. I think when I opened up my new in-the-box one, this was what was broken. Um, and I don't know why, why the pump isn't going. Uh, I think that's the on-off, is that the pump or is that the power switch? I can't remember now, hang on. Which way was it? This way. Yeah, that's the pump button. I mean, it could be a faulty on-off switch. It does feel a bit spongy. That's got a definite on-off, and that one hasn't. Hmm. So it could be that. I mean, I've, I've, I've damaged it anyway, so... Uh, let's take off the, uh, the switch assembly and it's not too dirty in here is it a bit of light dust 
Hmm. Yeah. I'm sure it's, I think it's related to the switch. Just wondering if I can just swap them over temporarily. But I don't, I just think, I just, I can't be bothered folks. What I will do though, is remove this gubbins because I am pretty sure it is this that was uh, when I opened up my other one pretty sure it was this that was broken in fact folks I have got my other one to hand so I will open that up and we'll have a look uh, it's not going to be easy is it you're not going to make it easy for me that's not going to come off. I'm just going to get my other one, my new in the box one. Take the top off and we'll just compare. I have a feeling it is this part that's broken on the one I have upstairs. Right, just two ticks folks, I'll be back. Well folks, here's my new in the box one. Yeah, switches are still quite stiff. For some reason there's no collar on here. I don't know if I left it off because as I said I've had this opened this must be later there's a few design differences they've changed the clips <laughs> good it's just a different uh, it's just a sticker logo yeah it's a sticker on the other one as well oh it is more or less the same but yeah here's the correct color <laughs> what a <laughs> what a difference hopefully I can get this this working this uh, yeah, as I say, this was new in the box, but didn't work. Let's just undo the clip. Two clips still. Oh, it's there. Right, that's good. That's that's the part. I've left it off because it goes on there. Look, that's the part that should be. Um, that's the part I think that's broken on the one I've just unboxed. And also the tubes on this one, a bit thinner tubes as well, they do actually have a metal end. And oh yes, a different style trigger. I also noticed when I, oh what's that? Where's, oh where's that come off? That's just under there. Oh, not sure where, that, where that's from. Um, just out of interest, the newer one I've got here did also come with the upholstery shampooing head which is good and some vintage vanish three-in-one carpet machine cleaner for three-in-one machines for electrolux recommended for electrolux and hoover oh i haven't opened it i can't give you a sniff well not that you'd be able to smell it but anyway 400 milliliters of solution so that was i believe that came with a with some hoover machines as well later in their production run so yeah i'm pretty sure this is a later model the serial number one on this is uh, starts with three so this could be 93 i'm not sure how many years it ran for yeah but there's, there's been a few changes this is definitely a later model so I'm going to be a bit more careful with this one. So off camera again, I'm going to carefully remove. Ooh. Oh, there's another one. It's, it's hidden under the sticker. I'm going to remove the screws, take the top off here, and um, I'll just refresh my memory as to why this one was not working. Okie dokie. Well, here's the new one opened up all nice and shiny new hmm well that one doesn't have a, a positive action either yeah you've got the definite click for on off but again this one so perhaps that's how it should be so yes let's have a look this is loose yeah I have a feeling it's just this Y piece here. Bury me in a Y-shaped coffin for any Black Adder fans there. 
I just I don't know why that came into my head. <laughs> I won't uh, tell you what that means. Ah, right. Hmm. Oh dear. Hmm. Perhaps there's something even more missing because hmm. Nothing's ever easy, is it, folks? Not in my um, experience. Oh, it's there. Oh, I was going to say something's missing. It's that piece. Of, uh, yeah. So that's broken off. I'm not sure whether this pump works either. I mean, it should. I don't know. But we can see the problem here. It's the Y-shaped piece. This bit's broken off. It should it should be there and it's quite a heavy piece of metal fixed to plastic and that that's what was broken when I opened this so is it going to just be a simple job or oh, wouldn't wouldn't that be blissful folks if I can just take this off and replace it is it going to be this oh it's not oh, it's sods law isn't it it's not quite the same. <sighs> See, I don't want to put an old pump in this new machine. Uh, yeah. Oh, it is quite different. And that's, that's, I don't know why that's loose as well. I don't know if that just pushes in. I don't think that should be loose. It might... There's, there's different wiring as well. Oh, I suppose, no, I think it's about, no. Oh no, it's the same. Hmm. What I'm going to do is, uh, let's carefully place the new top to one side and we'll just see. I've got an earthing wire and we've got two red wires going into the pump that I'm hoping should just pull out. Ah. Are you going to come out? Oh dear. See, I don't want to damage this in case I have to use this pump. But it looks, it looks like it should come out. Dear me. That should just leave her out. Oh, wrong screwdriver. Well, I hope you're enjoying it so far, folks. <laughs> I don't know. Normal people do this sort of thing without, without a camera recording their every move and their every mistake. There's something else I could try. Looking at it, yeah, I'll tr I can't get that out. So what I could possibly have a go at is undoing these two flat head screws and removing the Y-shaped piece complete from this old pump assembly and just fitting it onto the new one. Who knows, is it going to be that simple? Fingers crossed. Sometimes these sort of things are a simple fix, but obviously most of the time they're not. They appear simple at the beginning. Normally when I'm struggling with anything DIY, I have a word with my dear departed father and say, come on, Dad, put down that harp, stop ogling those angels and give me a hand. <laughs> Give me a hand with this, please. Oh, oh, thanks, Dad. <laughs> yes, yeah, see, oh, look, yes, I've got a, a spring. Right, don't lose all those, oh, there's a little, oh, right, I'll just have to be more careful when I'm taking it off the other one. And then, uh, let me have a look. Yes, it's too brown. Two brown wires into this and one earth. It's the same with the new one. 
and then we've got this which could be a solenoid valve I'm not sure it looks it looks like it's yeah it's wired the same so okay right I'm just gonna go for it folks I'm just going for it in for a penny in for a pound I've already written this machine off the donor machine now I don't think it would have made any difference had I opened this on the day I received it. I think it would have been just the same. So I'll take all these connections off. And because, well, I'm not, I'm not noting where they go because they should go in exactly the same place on the, when I'm going to replace it with seems awful having to replace a, a used part on a brand new more or less brand new unused cleaner right no, it doesn't matter about that screw I'll use the screws uh, I think that looks okay right so here's the piece that's broken on the new machine so I, th I finish with this Pop that to one side. Oh, I hope this I hope this fixes it. Otherwise, I'll be left with two machines going to the tip. So basically, now what I'm going to do, and I'll do it off camera. That should that's loose that bit. So basically, all this part here needs to come off. And mm, I'm hoping I can just fit it. But what I'm going to do first, so I don't get the wires mixed up, I'm going to attach all the wires to the uh, donor part. It should should go in now, oh, but that's around the diff oh that moves oh that that's good that moves so I can line it up. Okay, I'm just going to do it, folks, off camera because it's you're falling asleep. I can tell. I'm just going to wire up everything, reconnect it, and fingers crossed we'll have a working pump. Okay, so I've replaced this Y-shaped piece. So I've managed to use the, uh, the new pump in the new top. So I've put the new motor unit onto the old body with the water in the solution tank and I've uh, fed the tube into the water. <sighs> so I'm gonna, I'm gonna try it with the top off carefully try it with the top off just uh, have to uncable the uh, undo the cable uncable the do here we go let's hope I've uh, got it wired up correctly let's just plug it in right let's just double check I'm going to turn the motor on from a safe distance That's what I've, I've switched off again. Now I don't think hmm. it could well be the switch that's faulty as well. You know they do feel does feel a bit odd. All right, try again. Oh dear! I don't know if you've seen it. Yes, you might have seen some of it. Oh, I better be careful with. Oh, it shouldn't have carbon dust all over it because it's not been used. It's uh, spewing out a load. There's a load over there, and this is the new motor, but it is spewing out from somewhere the insulation. Oh, it is off, isn't it? Yeah, I could hear the pump going. when I was holding down the switch, but I wonder if both switches are faulty. Hmm. And I'm wondering if they're the same. I could take the on off switch from the donor machine and put it on there. But even so, I, I mean, I had to hold that down for the pump to continue running. I could hear the pump, but we still weren't getting any, 
Ah. This might not work. Right, hang on, folks. This might not spurt out until there is actually a tube attached. That could be the reason. Now, if that's the case, if I can get it to spurt some solution out or water out of that. Although I'll have to he keep the pump button held down manually, but at least I know then it's it's down to the switch. So what I'll do, well, I'll just turn on again and direct the tube into the suction inlet and hopefully we'll get some water coming out. Deary me, no water, so it's not that. What could it be? I'm absolutely flummoxed now, folks. Uh, it's, <laughs> it's spewing out all the internal foam insulation. Well, well we can see here, this, this part of the solution this is where the water goes in we can see this is the other part of that pipe so it's supposed to suck the solution through here into the pipe here through the pump and obviously out of the front and I can the pumps working I can hear the pump at this stage, folks, I just wanted to just throw it all in a box and throw it in the garage for another several years. <laughs> I haven't time for this. I didn't think I'd be so... Uh, I didn't think I'd have so much trouble. I mean, this is brand new. I thought the only reason it wasn't working was because this, was, this part was broken when I opened it up, but everything else looked fine. There's a little foam can't see that being a problem. Little foam filter that obviously should be there to prevent any particles getting into the pump that might have accidentally got into the clean water tank. I don't know folks. Really don't know what could be the problem. And where's all that stuff coming out of? It's uh, whew, it's probably going to end up noisier as I use it because it's uh, somewhere. Oh, here, look, look. You see that? It's uh, it's all coming out of that. Oh, there's more. Eventually, if I leave it on for a bit longer, it's just going to expel all of that. That. Oh, you see that foams. No, let's see, it's always this sort of foam. It perishes, folks. Oh, dear me. I'll have to look for an exploded view of this machine to see where the foam... I don't think I'll be able to get replacement foam. But as, as I, I'm sure it's just sound insulation. But it, it's got enough water in. Um, the end is wet. As wet as an otter's pocket. Not quite as wet, maybe, but it's it's wet. But I'm absolutely now. I have no idea. Um, you see, this pipe should be clear. I'll just blow through it. Yeah, that pipe's clear. And again, the switch I think the switch shouldn't be spongy it shouldn't have it should it should stay in it's funny that they're both faulty right we'll just say a prayer to the vacuum gods dear vacuum gods please let us see some water I wonder if I should help it through by trying to suck it through to get it going perhaps there might be some little valve inside that's just seized up I've got this problem. I've got a tiny little washing machine. You've not seen it yet. 
and it's got a solenoid valve that opens you know to let the water in and that's forever seizing up and I fixed it using some marine grade grease waterproof grease then I greased the little little metal piece that was that's kept jamming perhaps something jams in these anyway we'll just try it once more and then I'll have to I'll have to go and uh, tidy up and then have another look at this on another day I mean the next time if you ever see this again it'll be a demonstration if I can get it working so you'll know if it's working because I'll uh, I'll be showing you my new Master Lux the rest of this though so I expect I'll just uh, keep what I can for spares and uh, and the rest will have to go I'm afraid right I'll just try it once more once more for luck plug it back in Let's check the pump again. You see that now the pump will only run when the motor runs. And now I'm going to have to give up on this one for now, folks. I've no patience. If I had the whole day to do this, I'd be... I'd be doing it. Hang on, what's that off? Oh, the clips come off. That's off the old one. Oh dear. I don't know. I'll keep the. I'll keep everything. I'll just. I'll keep everything from the uh, the motor and the pump and all that gubbins from the spares machine, because obviously this bit is from the spares machine. I mean, even if I got a whole new, if I could even buy. A whole pump assembly for this I don't think I can um, my new in the box one's definitely a later model and you can see it's cheapened but having you know metal components connected to plastic it's asking for trouble isn't it really this is why it's 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 broken both ends it's broken this end and the end where it uh, comes out of the cleaner Three point five bar pressure it says on here for the pump. You know, I'm one it could be some of these components that are faulty. But the pump definitely works. I can hear the pump. But it's just not it's not working. It could just be something that seized I'll 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 have another play with this. I'm sorry it's not ended well, folks. We can't always get things working straight away. But that'll be it. If I've managed, as I said, if I've managed to fix this, get the pump working, I'll do a demonstration of the Master Lux. It's a shame if I can't get it to work. But there you go. I've tried and on this occasion I've failed. I've got a lot of clearing up to do as well. Thanks for watching. If you have any advice on why this might not be working, please advise below and um, I'll, I'll have another look at it. And I'll, if your advice is what made this work, then of course I'll give you a shout out saying so and so suggested this and it worked. Thank you very much. Here's a demonstration. <laughs> but until then, right, I've had enough, you've had enough. Go and do something more productive with your life, and I will. Well, I've got quite a lot of tidying up to do, so no rest for the wicked. It's definitely unplugged, yes. <laughs> we don't want electric shock. Okay, for me and the Electrolux Master Lux, it's goodbye, and I'll see you soon for the next video. Thanks for watching.